And hi ho internet neighbors! Welcome back to the channel. I am Vormithrax. This is Cataclysm. Dark days ahead. We are continuing our portal power challenge with Beth Brundle the second. Um, yeah. Happy Friday. <laughs> um, so we're in progress. We just got back at the end of Wednesday's episode uh, from a road trip. We went and visited some local schools. And um, educated the children on how to run, and how to scream, and how to avoid getting hit. Did pretty well at it. Scooped up a bunch of books on the way. Hit some uh, some libraries in the uh, schools. And uh, yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot of books. So we're no longer book deficit. We still have a few we're missing. And um, eh, probably not going to get them until I head into some labs. But um, we, we got a big old pile. <laughs> it's just a big old pile. So... We're back in base, and we're going to be heading out here pretty soon. Oh, oh hey, hey there, Dragon Man B. <laughs> Subway. Thank you very much. I'm going to need the luck. It's going to be a whole bunch of reading. <laughs> it's going to be really dangerous reading in the basement. That's what everybody loves, reading in the basement. Um, so, yeah, so Beth Brundle II, you can see where we're at. Not too much impressive-wise in the skill range, but we're going to fix that. Uh, the first short bit here of tonight's session, we're just going to mass cram a whole bunch of book learning. Um, it'll go pretty quick, though, because we've got fast reader and we've got a high intelligence and other stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll blitzkrieg through that, I don't think, with too much problem. We also need to get some magic training done and grab a few more items so I can get some gear put together. And then we'll finally be ready to actually start killing some zombies instead of running away from all the zombies. So... I'm hoping to get through most of the boring stuff fairly quickly. I'm pretty well set up for it. I just need to do things in somewhat of an order so I can get certain things put together to make this a little bit easier. So, uh, like I said, as you can see, there's Beth. And uh, the big on the trait side, the biggest one is the, uh, I guess, robust genetics will eventually come into play. And then we've got the mana and we've got fleet-footed. No night vision, so we've got a non-night vision character. We're nearsighted. Poor healers, probably the biggest of the negatives. So we only heal at one third the normal rate. Um, yeah, that's about it. So here's our gear. We're just rolling around mostly in found stuff. This right here is a recent addition. Made me very happy. I'm always on the lookout for it. I very seldom actually manage to get it when I hit up the SWAT trucks, but we did get a hold of SWAT armor. Super awesome early game armor piece. So we're taking advantage of the SWAT armor. And other than that, we're just rolling around with some backpacks and some found clothing. Um, nothing too impressive. The only deficit we've really got, major deficit in our tools, is the hacksaw. I have no hacksaw still. So we've got all the other tools, um, including rollerblades, but we've got no hacksaw. That's always a big disappointment when I get to this point and I'm still down certain tools. But we did pick up a pickaxe, so... Uh, we're doing pretty well there, and we've got tons and tons of stuff. Lots of stuff, including books. Here's the books. Lots and lots of books. Or look at it this way. There's the book list. And we're going to dogpile our way right through this whole thing in fair short order. You'll, you'll see here in just a bit. Uh, here is our map. This is where we're hanging out currently. This evac shelter just south of Cornwall. Hey there, Mikhail. Hey, hey. good evening to you. <laughs> good, good evening to you, too. Thanks very much for the resub. Appreciate that. So yeah, we're hanging out there at that evac shelter, just short of Cornwall. We've been kind of delicately raiding up into Cornwall as time goes by. We just got back from this area. We hit uh, we hit these two schools right there and right there. We left the third one for now. Um, I didn't want to press my luck any further. But uh, that was our recent location, and we've done a bit of traveling. Not a huge amount compared to some of my, my other runs, but a, a fair bit. That's where we started down here in Stewartstown. And our very first refugee center is right there. It's a little bit hard to get to. I don't have a path to it short of driving right through the middle of this town, which is never fun. Um, but yeah, so that's our first refugee center. Of the three, we're going to try to locate and get teleportals set up in. So there you go. That's kind of what's going on. Um, check through chat here. Howdy, howdy, everybody in chat. Yeah, we might find a mole rat. They're not that common. They do pretty much <laughs> wreck new player face. But um, they're kind of fun. I like mole rats. They're especially fun if you happen to cross one in the basement of a house in a big town. 
Because you just lure them upstairs and out in the middle of the street, and then you like bring every zombie from like two miles around to uh, to come meet the mole rat, and he just decimates legions of zombies. It's hilarious. It's a great way to get just massive amounts of free loot from the zombies if you still need the the basic zombie drops. New to the game, any tips to survive the first days? Oh, so, so many tips. So many. As, as noted, you might want to hit up my YouTube channel. I'm all about uh, helping new players learn the Cataclysm. Uh, that's my thing. That's what I do. Um, so hit my YouTube channel. And in particular, look the Quick Tip series, the University series, as kind of how to play the game. You can just watch whichever of those videos you think you might need help with a particular topic on. Um, and then if you're really new to the game, make sure to check out the live stream tutorial. Um, it's a really good introduction to the game, how to survive the first couple of days, just using a basic general character with the evac shelter start. I, I in detail demonstrate how to survive the first couple of days, what things to do, what things to think about, how to plan, how to go night raiding and day raiding the city nearby, all that kind of stuff. But I think you'll find that one really, really helpful. Um, and there's lots of challenge series, hard mode challenge series is pretty much what I do with my, uh, my Twitch live streams. So, um, but if I had to give one suggestion, it would be learn how to use your stamina. Most important thing, new players, pay attention, stamina, this thing right here. Make sure you understand that stamina bar. Make sure you understand uh, how to switch from walk to run, when to switch from walk to run, when not to run. Super, super important. Um, and I, I talk about it constantly in some of my tutorial stuff and even during the live streams. Just how important it is to manage that stamina. That is the new player killer. Stamina will kill you or lack of stamina will kill you more often than just about anything else. So learning how to successfully manage that is the biggest advantage you can give yourself in surviving in the Cataclysm. Uh, combine that with new players and old players alike. Your first few days in the Cataclysm, it's a zombie avoidance game. It is not a zombie killing game. Avoid every fight you possibly can early on until you've geared up a bit, got some gear, got some clothing and armor, got some weapons. Then you can go on the offensive and start uh, smashing zombie face. But in the early, early game, first few days, avoid, avoid, avoid. It's all about avoidance. All right, so... Uh, who else is talking? Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> books are dangerous. All those sharp edges. Yeah, I, I could, I could be in for some really rude paper cuts. Hey, Chaos Volt. Oh, you haven't missed anything. Not for this evening's run, anyway. Any tool on getting any tips on getting a tool with mana infusing? Well, isn't mana infusing? Just go to the enchanted section here and the, uh, the, 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 the thing. Oops. Enchanted. Uh, I don't have any options at the moment because I don't have any of it, but, uh, under tools, there should be, um, copper, uh, what's it called? It's the copper bracelet? Copper infused bracelet? I forget. I think I had a problem with it last time, actually, where it didn't... I never had it on my recipe list for some reason. Um, but if, if I remember right, that's where the mana infusing comes from. Hey there, Lethal Feline! Thanks very much for the Tier 1 sub. Uh, gotta find the alchemy book. Yeah, I thought I had the alchemy book last time when we when I didn't have it for whatever reason. But however, but yeah, there's there's infusion uh, tools that you can craft, copper or circlet or something, as as mentioned in chat. Um, all right, so I think that's enough intro stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get things rolling. So. We're going to do things in some particular orders here. I need to get my fab up first. That way we have access to all the tools and that. I want to craft a gas lantern, a gasoline lantern, and use that to read by instead of uh, burning planks. It's uh, much easier, much more efficient for my uses. Gas is easy to come by, and you don't use that much. A little bit of gas that you get out of a car will last a really long time light-wise. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we'll see what we can do. Um, what time is it? It's 1 p.m. We just got back from our trip. Let me make sure first. Did I unload the vehicle? I can't remember. Here's our our our, 
our vehicle uh, stockpile, so far anyway. This was here. This didn't have any wheels, but this was just squatting here outside the evac shelter. This we drove in on, and this we just found in one of our trips up north. It's a pristine condition uh, electronic or electric vehicle. So, 100% green. Gotta love those. Found it in a random garage. We'll tear it apart for the uh, solar panels and the storage batteries, of course. That'll go into whatever vehicle I mod up. But yeah, for the very, very first time ever, after literally thousands of hours of live streams, I'm finally driving <laughs> the Bandit Bulldozer around the countryside. First time ever. For the longest time, for like a year and a half, I had it on my bucket list of cataclysm things to do to actually find one of these things in good enough condition that I could drive it, even just a few feet. It took forever. They're just really, really rare to find and rare to, even rare to find in working condition or close enough that you can get them running. And uh, we finally located one and it was working right out of the gate, sitting outside of a bandit house, of all things. So we snuck in and we we took it. We we made it our own. It's hilarious. I love it. It's actually really fun. It's just got no storage capacity. So I'm going to have to think about the whole storage capacity thing and how I'm going to handle it because one isn't a lot. Now, if I had a home base type setup, it wouldn't be so bad because I could just put stuff in it and take it back to home base. And 250, once I cargo space, it would be fine for that. But if I'm having to roam around the countryside long-term looking for refugee centers and other stuff, uh, I can't carry much. I can't carry much of my stuff. Now, by the time we finish our book reading and we get all our gear, our gear actually crafted and so on, I'm going to leave behind just a massive pile of stuff. I won't really need that much space. So I've never tried modding a bandit bulldozer into a usable end goal type vehicle. I, I'm, I'm undecided whether I'm going to try it or not. Um, it's really, really cool, though. I, I have never driven one before, and uh, the the spiked ram on the front is really, really effective, and the treads and the size and weight of the vehicle allows it to turn really, really quickly, gets up to speed really quickly, and it's 100% off-road capability, meaning it travels the same speed on grass that it does on the roadway. So it's incredibly maneuverable and responsive, which is awesome. Just the one downside of just no cargo space. So, we'll see. I'm undecided how I'm going to deal with this. Um, I may put one more row on the back here. And then that would allow me to turn the... Well, or at least one. Uh, I don't know. I, I, we'll see. <laughs> we're, we're not to that point yet. But we got a lot of other stuff to get done. Um, and then I do have some unfinished business. We've got right up here... We left behind a lot of stuff in the SWAT truck because we had weight and space problems on our way out of the city. So I do need to go up there and retrieve my stuff. Um, in particular, I know I had picked up a spring and apparently I left it in that truck because I don't have it here in my base. So I need that spring so I can put together the survivor telescope. So when we go up high, we get the much better view range. All right, so let's head back down to the basement first. Um, do do. Hey, Tortuga. <laughs> Audio only. That's perfectly fine. That's how a lot of people do my stuff. Especially when they go to sleep. I apparently have a nice, soothing, vormy voice that uh, lulls people into a, a nice, cataclysm-themed dreamland. Uh, this person's been alive. It started on day 31, so we're four days in. So we're, we're pretty new, but... I play a lot of Cataclysm, as you are aware, and um, I tend to speed run through these challenges. So I end up with endgame characters usually within about the first week. And this 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 lady will be endgame here by the time we're done. So we've got quite the dis quite the pile of books to get read. But then we're gonna get some stuff crafted, and then we're gonna get rolling. So the fun part will be seeing how fast I can smash through all these books and get ourselves to the endgame position, um, skill wise. So. All right, uh, two, 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 two. so why is our int down? What do we got going on? Mild pain is lowering a little bit. Yeah, all right, 13 is our normal, so we're losing one from the pain. That'll go away here in a minute. We'll go ahead and take an aspirin. Um, 
Not holding any gear that I need to worry about. No, I am not. Yeah, my big regret is just the lack of the hacksaw. I, I am, I'm desperately trying to avoid going through the whole metalworking process if I can manage it, but... Uh, every once in a while, these challenges just refuse to give me either a wrench or a hacksaw, and I have to actually make one. Really disappointing when that happens, but um, oh well. That's that's why I play on half item drop rate to maintain some kind of scarcity of uh, of items. So I run into these kinds of difficulties and I have to deal with it. Um, do do. do. What are we gonna work on first? Oh yeah, we're gonna work on uh, fabrication. So how much firewood do I have left? Thirty five, and I think I have finished chopping up all of the. Yeah, I finished. Could take the doors down. Prefer not to. So let's let's go up and grab a few more planks. For the audio only folks, I'm smashing uh, <laughs> smashing seats, wooden stuff. I'm in the upper section of the uh, shelter, just wailing away with my fire axe at uh, wooden counters and stuff. away so we can drag items a little more efficiently. No, not that one. keys. Alright, 73 more planks. That'll do. How many can I grab? Um, yep, that's fine. Just want to get everything set up and ready for oh, not that many. Uh, the big reading session, so we can just get through this as quickly as possible. Wish I had uh, Z levels turned on, but they drive me berserk, so they're not. One more trip. That should be plenty. It won't take me long to get the uh, fabrication up. We'll get the gasoline lantern crafted, and then we will be sitting pretty for a light source to read by downstairs. All right, that gets us to 108. That should be plenty. Let's go ahead and do some reading. Uh, we are slaked, so we have food and uh, thirst are fine. We're also normal weight, so we're hanging in there on the weight. Let's do um, calcium tab, multivitamins. And let's see, which fab book do we want? No fun factor, 19 minutes. That goes to seven with the same, and then we can do, yeah, it's going to be this one, and then it's going to be the fireman book, and that'll get us to fab nine. I think I need fab five for the gas lantern, something like that. Looks like we were three quarters of the way through this level anyway. So there's fab five. Let's see if we can do the lantern. Gasoline lantern. I need an opened aluminum can or an open tin can. How do I not have one of those? All right, let's go eat a tin can of canned salmon. Yum, yum. And now let's try to make our lantern. Hey, gas lantern. One hour to make a gas lantern. It's going to be worth it. All right, so we have a gas lantern crafted. Let's now, do I have any jerry cans? No jerry cans down here. I think I only picked up that one steel jerry can I put in the back of the vehicle. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's fine. We're gonna be here doing this for a while, so I'll just... Somebody broke my window! No! 
Northwest, probably one of these two. All right, let's get the uh, let's get the axe out. Let's drop some backpacks. Who's coming to visit? There's the window. Just a standard old zombie. All right, that's fine. Do I care about any of this stuff? I do not care about any of this stuff. Any other zombies? Standard zombie is where? 59 to the west? No, nah, that's, that's too far to worry about. Not seeing anybody else nearby, so... Alright, just pick up our... Pick up our jerry can! And we're also going to siphon some gas. Whoops, I need a hose to siphon? I don't have a hose on me? I always have a hose. The heck? Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. How did I manage to um, drop the hose? Alright, now I'm confused. <laughs> oh, did I use the hose in making the lantern? Hey, Draco. Thanks very much for the Twitch Prime. Did I do that? Doesn't say it requires a hose. What the hell happened to my rubber hose? I've been siphoning fuel regularly, so... Hmm. Love the vids, how's it going? That's going pretty good. Early in the evening, I haven't yet managed to kill myself, so that's always a positive. Now it's just the mystery of the missing rubber hose. <laughs> I always make sure to have one or a few on me, and somehow I've managed to disappear my rubber hose. Oh, that's where it's at, yeah. Good point, I did drop my backpack, and it chose to drop my rubber hose as one of the random items that hit the ground. <laughs> Just me being forgetful. All right, siphon gas into the container, jerry can. All right, that leaves 41 liters in the tank. That's plenty for the vehicle. And we'll be able to read books and craft with the gas lantern for a really long time with this amount of gas. So we'll just leave, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll leave it down here for now so I can keep an eye on it. Take the gasoline lantern, refill the lantern. All right, let's uh, extinguish a fire, activate our lantern. Need at least one charge. All right, what, what, what happened here? I thought I said refill the lantern. Apparently it didn't do it. Now it did it. Hmm. All right. Whatever game. So there we go. Now we've got nice, clean, consistent, bright light that we can read and craft by without getting smoke inhalation from the brazier and without having to burn the remaining wood that I've got available here. I'd hate to have to go chop some trees down and drag some logs in just so we could finish doing this kind of stuff. But gas is easy to come by, and this will be much, much simpler. Okay, let's finish this up. So we're still working on fab. We're going to use Guard of Glass Blowing to get to seven, two levels for that, and then we will do uh, the Firefighter Book. That'll get us to nine. Excuse me. And we're also going to use our Synaptic Stimulation. I'm actually, I'm debating, do I want to level this thing up a little more so it lasts longer, so I get the bonus for a bit longer? I don't think it's going to help all that much, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll cast it. That bumps my int up to 17, and now we'll try to read from here, see how fast this goes. Uh, oh yeah, what else? Our morale is not really any modifiers. Let's grab some happy making food. No. Bra? Oh, wrong column. <laughs> Chocolate bar. I don't have that much in the way of ready-to-go processed foods, apparently. Chocolate bar is my only choice. Hmm. All right, do I have any uh, any musical instruments? I can't remember if I picked one up with this character. 
Any guitars? Any... I got the MP3 player, but that's gonna zero out my batteries pretty quick. I don't think I have a... Um... I don't think I have a musical instrument yet. We haven't come across one. I haven't made a point of grabbing one. Guess we'll grab the uh, MP3 player. We'll use some batteries up for it. Uh, where are you at? <clears throat> really? And it's not using the light disposable battery with a 300 charge. Really? Why, why isn't it <laughs> showing me the option for the 300 charge battery? That's weird. Let's do it this way. Put that in my inventory. Step away from all the other stuff. Reload. No, it's not. It's not allowing me to reload uh, 300 charge disposable. It's, it's it's a light battery. It should work in the MP3 player, but for some reason it's not. I mean, all the other versions of light are listed here, but it's not got. It doesn't have the disposable version. That's um. That's a uh, that's a discrepancy. Somebody needs to fix that. They just changed the disposable batteries and uh, the lights and changed it around the drop rates for the various ones, making the disposables more common than the rechargeables. And apparently the MP3 player didn't get the message. <laughs> it's not listing the new version. Um, hmm. I don't have enough of these charges for most of this. We haven't picked up a ton of the light batteries lately. I can mod it for a medium... But we need some electronic skill, which we haven't learned yet. Alright, fine. Be that way, game. Uh, MP3 player on. Now we got some bonuses. Now let's try to read. How long is this going to take? Oh, look at that. Blitzkrieg! Bam! Level done. Next level. I guess we should get something to drink first. Oh, that's right. I need to whip up some more pine nuts. We'll get this level done first. Oh, that's so fast! <laughs> so there's Fab 7. Now, watch what happens here. My favorite book! History of Firefighting. Level 7 to level 9 fabrication. Six minute chapters. Oh, we ran out of uh, lantern juice. Reload the lantern juice. See, it just did it again. I told it to reload. I do have gasoline. It's right here. <laughs> it's in range. Hmm. That's weird. Oh no, that's right. I can't. I can't reload from range. I can only craft materials. Never mind. It makes sense. Alright. Oh, look at that go. Level done. And level done. So we've gone from Fab 4? 4 or 5? I forget where we started. Mid 4 or mid 5. to Level 9. And uh, single sitting so far. That's how fast this is going to go. We, we should be able to just smash these things out. So turn that off. Turn that off. Um, when we wake up, we'll uh, we'll get our food and water sorted. All right, we're tired. We're going to sleep. I'm gonna try to remember to cast the um, synaptic stimulation each time before I start a reading session. I'll probably forget. <laughs> I should be able to cast it like eight or nine times, so it should go should be active at the start of eight or nine different books, book reading sessions. Um, I'm hoping that'll speed things up even further. All right, now we do need to turn the, the uh, fire back on. And first things first, let's brew up some clean water. 
Actually, do I now have the... Oh, I do have pine needle tea! Pine needle tea! We're going to brew up a whole crap load of pine needle tea. So we picked up one of the books we needed for the pine needle tea. And uh, I stockpiled a bunch earlier when we were harvesting from pine trees. Let's do uh, into a container, into that metal tank there. Do it again. Do it again. We're going to spend a good part of the day just getting our food ready so I don't have to deal with it again. Oh, we finally ran out. How many I got left? Seven more. Pine needle tea is pretty healthy stuff. We'll consume what we need. And the rest in there. 62 pine needle tea ready to go. And now we'll do uh, pine nuts. I know we brought back a massive supply of those. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I think I have more, but that's enough for now. So we got 100 pine nuts. That'll take me through a week or so easily. I'll slide that up here to my ready to eat and ready to drink food supplies. Um, all right, weight is still normal. Tamp out our fire, turn the lantern back on, turn the MP3 player back on, recast synaptic, failed twice. <laughs> All right, int 17, what's next? We're up to fab nine. I can't do anything beyond that book wise. Um, we got the lantern made, which is the main thing I initially wanted to do. I think I want to do electronics next. Now let's let's just go do the tailoring. That way I can take a look and know what I'm missing for my survivor gear. Uh, so tailoring four to six. Don't think I have any other choices. Nope. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's make this a little simpler. All right, there's tailoring six. Whoops, oh, not, not that one. Um, so now, tab nine, tailoring six. Oh, survivor, spelling it wrong. Survivor suit, there we go. So all we're missing is the uh, duct tape. And then, oh, good old leather. I haven't picked up the odd items like a utility belt or tool belt because we haven't done much killing yet of zombies. So usually I snag these up as I come across them. But we've been avoiding, avoiding, avoiding instead of fighting anything. So uh, we haven't had an opportunity to grab those. So I'm going to have to make the pouches, unfortunately, which is going to require leather that I was really hoping to use for something else. Leather is hard to come by nowadays. Um, all right, we'll hold off on that for now. I'm going to have to rethink how we're going to deal with that deficit. Tired already. That doesn't make sense. Stimulate the snapsies. I don't want to be tired. All right, next up. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can't take tailoring any higher without actually crafting instead of reading. Uh, mechanics, electronics, and eventually... Let's see... Let's do electronics next. Eight minutes versus three minutes for the level one. That'll go real fast. I think I'm missing, what, one, one electronics level that I have to craft in order to get through? All right, electronics three. And then we've got electronics books to go further, but I need to bridge the three to four gap. We have to do that through crafting. All 
Tired again. Let's check for recipes. So, electronics. Alright, what can I make? It's got simple material requirements. Battery mods. Copper wire. I don't have a lot of copper wire, so that's going to be a little tough. Well, crap. We're going to be missing a recipe I can use to easily level up. Electronics. Pretty much copper wire across the board causing my problem. I want to say micro motor is what I've used in the past. I got plenty of solder, plenty of scrap metal, again, just some copper wire. And that's five that I could make if I just grab some electronic scrap. Basically, we're going to have to go grab some electronic gear. Um, take apart some computers, take apart some uh, arcade machines. The arcade is one of my favorite places to go. Um, I don't know. Really? That's what you're going to show me for that? No arcades on my screen anywhere nearby? Hmm. What's the best source of leather typically? In the past, it's been taking apart car seats, but they recently changed car seats. Most of them now are cloth instead of leather. Used to be, go to any car, just uh, remove the car seat and then butcher it or disassemble it and you'd have lots of uh, pipes, leather, and springs, but um, now they're almost all cloth. The only ones that provide leather are luxury vehicles. There's a few different luxury vehicles, like the luxury RV up top, but <laughs> I can't use it because I don't have a hacksaw. I'm missing the one tool I need to get the leather from the vehicle that is actually sitting just above the evac shelter here. So, it's probably still one of the best sources. You just got to track down certain vehicles. Limousines, luxury RVs, I'm not sure what else yet. It's a relatively recent change. Beyond that, it's probably scavenging for uh, leather from anim or from zombies. Um, leather jackets, leather pants, leather touring suits, things like that. You'll get 10 to 20 pieces of leather out of each of those once you get them back to your base and you get them cleaned up and then butchered. Um, and once you're into the zombie killing mode, that's not hard to do. It's just the timing and convenience for where I'm at in the game and what we've done so far. I haven't been able to pick up much in that regard. So I've got a leather deficit. I am suffering from a leather deficit, which is going to cause a bit of a problem. So we're going to end up having to go out, do some killing, and uh, grab up some leather, grab up some electronics gear um, that I can finish my electronics training with. So... We're stuck for electronics for now, basically. We, we got other stuff we can finish reading. I know the list of things we're going to have to get a hold of, so... Let's do uh, mechanics next, probably. Mechanics, then we'll finish first aid. Oh, actually, I do have Sir Fab to 10 if I want to do it. I forgot I had the uh, the weapons books. But yeah, we're, we're, we're piling through it. Only probably one more day, and we're going to be done... Um, so it's going really fast. All right, let's get uh, things turned off. Let's go take another nap. At least I'm hoping I'll be able to put together enough equipment to get uh, the survivor. Well, I've got the SWAT armor, so even the survivor gear is kind of secondary at the moment for killing just normal zombies <coughs> or running through houses and grabbing up the uh, clothing I need. All right, have some more um, calcium and vitamins. Reload that. Gas lantern on. MP3 player on. Synaptics stimulated. And mechanics. One 
level done. Oops, forgot to redo the synaptic before I started that one. Two done. And ran out of gas again. Uh, mechanics six, and I think we're stuck there. I don't have anything that'll take me up. Oh, never mind. We can go to eight. Ooh. Long book. <laughs> and ran out of light again. items tumble to the ground <laughs> while I'm reading. That's interesting. Hmm. All right, Mechanics 8 will let me do anything I need. I can, uh, um, yeah, sure, stop reading. I can uh, mod the vehicles any way I might want. Always good to have that ready to go. Oops, left the MP3 player on. <laughs> We're sleeping to some music. All right. Um. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to be done with the music for now. I don't have enough batteries. Finish that one off. There we go. Mechanics 8's all done. Next up, let's get rid of some of these other low level books. list is getting pretty short. Let's go ahead and get computers done. At least as high as I can take it right now. Told you to go fast. We've got that massive list of books just about finished up. Big thing is just having everything prepped, having a nice safe spot, having the light source that you need, having the food that you need, having everything organized, ready to go. Oops. All right, let's do computers again. Man, that tanks my focus so bad. 
minus two fun factor out of that computer's book. It's tripling how long it's taking me to read this. All right, Computers 5. We're short SICP. I don't have the one and only book that'll take you up to Computers 8, so... That one's hard to come across outside of a lab. Harder, anyway. All right, let's go ahead and finish. Let's see. I don't have any trapping books. I gotta make sure I pick up some trapping books. Trapping's actually something I almost never bother to, to level up when I the few times I actually have any books for it, but it's actually going to be somewhat integral to this particular challenge because I'm going to need to uh, disarm and then disassemble teleport traps in labs in order to put together the teleporter pods that is the uh, goal of the challenge. And I don't have a high dex, so <laughs> we're going to be accidentally teleporting quite a bit, I think. When we fail these uh, dis these trap disarms regularly, so I need to make sure I push trapping as high as I can. And I don't have a single trapping book. We haven't come across one, or I didn't pick it up. One or the other. Um, finish that. I don't know that I need more of this. There's not too many recipes I care about leveling that one. Don't care about submachine guns. Yeah, let's go ahead and get electronics finished up. All right, Fab 10. So yeah, I see there's some conversation about which uh, survivor gear I put together. I vacillate between light and standard survivor gear. Depends on the character build, depends on what I think I'm gonna be needing to do in the challenge and anything else I've managed to find. Um, the important part is trying to get to 12-12 protection at 100%. So that's always my goal. If I can get to 12 bash, 12 cut protection, at 100% coverage on all of the major body parts, that's my goal. I can't get to that usually with light armor. So with light armor, you're, you're short of that goal without layering on several other things. Um, you can get a little closer to it, a little easier with uh, standard survivor gear plus the flame resistant suit. Um, the suit, the hood, the gloves. Those two, I think, usually get to 12-12 if I'm remembering right. Um, so the reason is because 12-12 renders you effectively immune to standard zombie damage, which is 95, 98% of what's going to be hitting you is just the low-level zombies. That's what's in largest supply that you're always going to be wondering or worrying about. So the bigger stuff will hit harder and we'll get through the armor, but uh, usually you avoid and or deal with them at range, not uh, not hand-to-hand. -hand. So it's more important just to get to that 12-12 and you're good to go. And it's just too hard to get to those numbers with the light survivor gear. So we'll see the numbers here in a second. I'm missing some items I'm going to need to effectively put the stuff together anyway. So uh, take another, another night's sleep. We're up to day 41. So we've what? Spent a week not quite a week down here uh reading up which considering what we managed to get through is pretty good so we're getting positive health messages it says you feel extra alert and your body feels ready to go that's because we're eating nothing but pine needle tea and pine nuts <laughs> along with my not eating bad food previously we've maintained a good healthy hidden health stat because we've been eating healthy foods and avoiding uh bacon and uh, cracklins and uh, donuts All right, let's get these last couple books done, then we can look at the other stuff. Uh, cooking. It is going to be important that I get the cooking skill up. We are going to be mutating this run, hopefully. Plus, I need the cooking skill to get uh, antifungal drugs put together once I get the recipe for it. Look at that. What, what, what that? Why is my stuff... <laughs> Your backpack tumbles to the rock floor. What is up with that? Is this some new thing I'm not aware of? Earlier I had books tumble to the floor and even some other items. So <laughs> what what is up with my my stuff tumbling to the floor? Yeah, one of my backpacks dropped and it also it didn't quite drop anything else. It's just the backpack that dropped. But how how do I how do I drop a backpack that I'm wearing? <laughs> 
Hunger, Thirst debuffs? Really? Hunger and Thirst debuffs cause you to drop items? I've never seen that. If that's a thing, that's a brand new thing. I mean, brand, brand new. I ain't never seen something like that before. And I'm having a hard time conceptualizing <laughs> what 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 reasoning there is behind a backpack falling off my body just by being uh, hungry or thirsty. So, cooking six, and uh, we got advanced cam. We can go all the way to eight. Awesome. Pretty much the way to go above eight is when you start crafting mutagens and purifiers. Look at this. We're just about to hit the bottom of my pine nut supply. Not sure I can make it to eight before we get dead tired. But as you can see, the gasoline lantern is super, super helpful. Gas, it's just so fuel efficient. Gas is so easy to get a hold of and stockpile. So this was full when we started. We've only used seven liters of the gas in all of the, the week that we've been down here reading books. <laughs> so do, uh, do take advantage of that. Fab five, make a gasoline lantern. Make your life a little easier. How did you learn cooking with chemistry book? <laughs> yeah, all the chemistry stuff is based on the cooking skill. Just cause. Just about zeroed out our pine nuts and our pine needle tea. Worked out pretty well. All right, um, anything else on the list? I don't care about the survival, and I don't care about the submachine guns, and the rest of the list is empty. All I have left is the electronics books, and I don't have the raw materials I need to bridge the gap between level three and level four, so I either need to go find the book to bridge it, or uh, scoop up, go hoover up a bunch of electronics parts to uh, craft up <coughs> the level difference. All right, let's, uh, now that that's done, we'll turn our attention to actually building some stuff. First, we'll go to sleep one more time. Yeah, I almost never build the heavy armor, as Sky Breach noted. I just can't stand the uh, slowdown. I don't see the point to armoring up to such a degree that you're permanently slowing yourself down which has serious effects to 98 percent of the things you're going to fight just to save yourself from getting damaged by the one or two percent of the things that you need that armor for it's just bad logic in my brain um but do it however you like. Everybody's got their own style and preferences. I prefer to use my brain to avoid the larger, more dangerous stuff and use the armor so I can just basically walk through all the low-level stuff without having to slow down or really worry about it over much. Stamina will still kill you. I mean, having the 12-12 immunity doesn't mean you're not going to get mobbed under and killed. Um... Because your stamina will still go to zero and you'll have all these other negative consequences and they'll eventually poke you in the eyes enough time to kill you. <laughs> it's almost always the eyes. Because the eyes are connected to the head hit points and uh, you just can't, you can't layer up your eye protection enough and you just get smacked in the mouth or you get poked in the eyes eventually enough times to kill you. So that's, that's always hilarious. I think that's funny. Um... All right, so we got the reading session done. That didn't take too long, so I'm happy about that. Let's get the fire going again for now. Get another batch of... Actually, I need to get the tea finished off before I... All right, so we won't worry about that. All right, so let's look at some recipes. So... The survivor stuff. I can do the boots. I can do the gloves. I can do the... Hood and helmet. Uh, usually I go for the extra or the uh, the heavy helmet, but I don't have the option for heavy yet. I'm one level short. 
My preference is to do the heavy helmet because the uh, head still has no negative in-game consequences for encumbrance, so there's no reason not to go with the heavy helmet, get the extra protection value for, for no negative consequence. Um, but I need one more level of tailoring to do it, so I'll, I'll try to save the helmet for last. Um, I'm really hoping, eh, with a high intelligence, I don't think I'll fail crafting, but it's possible. Um, what am I missing for the suit again? I need duct tape, and I need the uh, purses or pouches. So, light survivor suit is uh, 610 protection, and the standard survivor suit's 812. And like I said, it's just a matter of the ability to get to these numbers to 1212. Bash is the more important one against most of the zombies. They're mostly going to be bash damage, hitting you with their fists. Um, so the fact that it's two points closer to that 12 number is fairly important. Um, I don't think there's much... Because usually I end up, if I start with the light, I end up transitioning by modding it. I modify it with extra Kevlar and turns it into a basically a regular suit eventually anyway. Um, this character has no martial arts. None yet, anyway. We haven't found any books. So we didn't start with any kind of martial arts uh, training. So we don't really have any super uh, ability to kill zombies quickly. And we also don't have much in the way of uh, combat training. All of our melee skills are pretty low. Melee itself, we had that one book for. But as you can see, zero bash, zero cut, zero pierce. <laughs> we, we haven't done hardly any fighting yet. So killing stuff is going to be a little tough. It's all going to be stamina management. And um, when you transition into the later game, weight is also very important. So go with the light or go with the medium. Um... I'm kind of tempted to go with the light survivor suit actually initially because I can mod it and then upgrade it to basically the mediums later with just some extra Kevlar. Hmm. And I'm not playing a character with uh, imperceptive healer. So the poor healer is it's bad, but it's not nearly as bad as the imperceptive healer. If I was playing imperceptive, I would probably go straight for the heavier armor. Because um, recovering the hit points I would uh, lose would be really, really hard. It would be more important to be armored up initially. I'm not going to have dodge of any kind, really, at this stage of the game. So I'm not worried about maintaining dodge. So yeah, I think I'll go with the light suit. Also more likely to not fail. Because <laughs> we're uh, one level up on the requirement. So it won't fail. But I need to get uh, four leather pouches or six pouches put together. Six pouches, please. Uh, thread's fine. <clears throat> oh, I never made the workbench. I should have made the workbench. Uh, I think I'm still missing components for it. 